Medical school is somehow simultaneously everything I expected and nothing like I'd imagined. Hi, my name's Laura and I'm going into my fourth year of medicine. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you an insight of what to expect from medical school. I'll break it up into preclinical and clinical years and I'll also touch on the assessments for both of those. In preclinical years, which is typically years one and two, you'll move through different blocks on each of the body systems. This forms the foundation of your theoretical knowledge. Your week will look something like this. Now this is actually my week six timetable from first year. It looks a little bit complicated though, so let's simplify it. On Monday morning, you have lectures. Lectures form the basis of your knowledge. They'll teach you what you need to know and then you generally go away and add on to that. You can attend them in person or they're generally also recorded. I would recommend attending in person if you can. That way you can ask any questions you might have and it's just easier to stay engaged that way. On Monday afternoons is PBL. PBL is a small tutorial group of about 10 people and essentially it's a student-led case study. On Monday, you'll be given a patient's history and some investigation results. And as a team, you'll come up with a list of potential diagnoses and then work out what you need to learn that week in order to be sure. These become your weekly learning objectives, which you'll spend your week working through. Then on either Tuesday or Thursday, you'll have ICM, which stands for Introduction to Clinical Medicine. This is a two hour tutorial with three or four of your peers where each week you'll have a doctor walk you through aspects of taking patient histories or performing physical exams. This part of the session will last for about 30 to 40 minutes before you head over to the hospital where for the next couple of hours you'll speak with and examine real life patients. On Wednesday morning you'll have your anatomy lab. As the name suggests, this is where you'll work with human cadaveric specimens to learn the ins and outs of how our bodies work. There will generally be a workbook to go through which I would highly recommend going through before the session and then there's typically three to six stations a week which will each have a tutor who will teach you for about 30 minutes yes they actually use real bodies yes the formaldehyde is a strong smell and yes it will make you weirdly hungry after anatomy is PPD or personal and professional development this was actually one of my favorite classes it goes through the medico legal and ethical considerations of becoming a doctor it always had the nicest tutors and was always very relaxed. It's mostly just a round table discussion on things like working with cadavers, professionalism, medical history, communication, mental health in medical students, or in this week's lesson, the Hippocratic Oath. Then on Wednesday afternoon, you have some more lectures. Now, depending which day your ICM falls on, either Tuesday or Thursday will be a study day. So you'll have no organized classes. On Friday, you'll have your second PBL where you'll present your learning objectives from the week and be given more case information to work out the diagnosis and management of your patient. Also on Friday is the anatomy review or the open lab. So this is unstructured time that you get to work with the specimens. Definitely go to this. You'll have anatomy spot tests which you need to pass and the best way to study for that is to go and familiarize yourself with the specimens. After PBL you'll generally have a tutorial in either the computer or histology labs. The best way that I can describe the computer Lab tutorials is it's sort of like a high school science prac lesson. You'll work through many experiments like using electrodes to measure muscle contractions or in the histology labs you'll be looking at specimens under a microscope. And finally you'll finish up the week with some more lectures. Now in terms of preclinical assessments you'll have a mixture of multiple choice and short answer exams in the middle and at the end of the semesters as well as written assignments and OSCEs which are practical assessments of your history taking and physical examination skills. We we had eight exams which you had to pass at least six of and get an aggregate of over 50% for, two written assignments and four OSCE stations which all had to be passed satisfactorily. You'll also have two interviews per semester with your PBL tutor to review your progress and they'll give you feedback on things like your contributions to the group and your clinical reasoning skills. Alongside this you'll have to maintain a portfolio of your learning experiences which you'll also do a presentation for to a group of academics at the end 
of the year. In clinical years, you'll move through five to nine week rotations with different specialties, spending five days a week, full-time hours in the hospital. This consolidates your theoretical knowledge, as well as allowing you to learn the practical side of managing patients and learning the ropes of the hospital system. At my uni, we have seven five-week rotations in both third and fifth years, comprised of two medical, two surgical, one critical care, one GP slash community, and one research rotation. Everyone completes different rotations. You do get to loosely preference options. I got three out of the six of my preferences last year, but the only real guarantee is that you'll end up with one core medical rotation. So either cardiology, respiratory, neurology, or gastro. You'll also probably have the option to go to different hospitals, which I would highly recommend. Meanwhile, in fourth year, we have four nine-week rotations in pediatrics, obstetrics and gynecology, mental health, and a combined on oncology and research block. In clinical years, you'll have three lecture weeks throughout the year where they'll give you overviews on things like the top 10 things in cardiology or a crash course on dementia. They're very brief, but they generally give you a good idea of what high yield content to study. Oh, because that's another thing. In clinical years, there is no syllabus or set learning outcomes. The guidance you're given is common things are common. Make sure you know all of them. So you're constantly piecing together things that you're seeing on the wards with things that past students have told you are worth knowing because come exam time, it is a free for all. They can ask you anything, which fair enough, because when you're a doctor, you need to know the basics of everything. But where it gets tricky is even though you only do two medical rotations, you'll still need to be able to answer questions from all the other specialties as well. So when it comes to assessments, the clinical years are very varied. You'll generally have written exams at the end of each rotation or each semester, which are a combination of multiple choice and short answer questions. You'll complete between 5 and 15 mini CEX or EPAs per rotation depending on the specialty. So these are informal practical assessments supervised by your attending. It can be anything from history taking to patient examination to procedures such as suturing or putting in a catheter or developing management plans. You'll also have a logbook detailing all of your observations and experiences and competencies for each rotation. You'll also have an end of attachment assessment for each specialty which involves an interview and a form that they fill out. In terms of OSCEs there's up to four per year with six to eight stations each. You'll have your MD project which is your integrated master's thesis or research project. I've designed my own study meaning I also have to collect all of my patient data which takes about two hours per person and as part of the MD process there's also about four written assignments which involves things like proposals and literature reviews and progress reports. There's usually around two ethics essays a year. There are six clinical case reports each year which you also present to an academic in the field. There's the MD portfolio which you carry through your whole degree which will also involve an essay and one to two interviews per year. There's six scientific streams cases which are essentially PBLs that you work through by yourself. Any additional case studies that you're attending asks you to complete and you'll usually present those on ward rounds as well. Keeping in mind that all of this happens after hours because there's compulsory 100% attendance for your full time hospital placements. Anyway, I hope that hasn't scared you or turned you off wanting to study medicine because it really is fun and so rewarding. If you're wanting to know how I got into medical school or maybe you've got in and are after some advice on starting, watch these next.